Hello, welcome to my video. So, I want to apologize in advance if what I have to say offends anyone. I don't mean to be offensive, but this is a topic I feel strongly about and I tend to speak my mind. So, the topic I want to discuss is about the idea that some have that if you don't listen to and don't know a lot about the original bands and music style that hurts spawn the idea of the goth lifestyle, then you're not goth. I think this idea is completely bullshit. Now, the reason why I think that. First of all, let me say that while I don't think that knowing anything about these bands and listening to them is required to be goth, <coughs> I don't think we should completely forget that they spawned the lifestyle in the form it has now, either. These, um, this music style definitely, um, uh, we definitely owe it a lot, and we should respect God's roots. However, there's a difference between this, uh, respecting the roots of the lifestyle as we know it today and putting this music so much on a pedestal that anyone who doesn't have that music taste are not got. Now, first of all, <coughs> I think that the idea that these events, this music, the the goth music that came from the punk scene is solely responsible for the creation of the goth lifestyle. I think that's wrong. Did I have a big part in it? Yes, I did. But being solely responsible? No. Now, let me explain what I mean. There have been people to about all ages who have had a darker uh, a darker um, outlook on life. Uh, for a famous example, look at Byron, Poe, and those guys there, and the people around them. And of course they weren't called goth because there wasn't a lifestyle coined at that time, but if they had lived today, the chances are pretty big they would be goths. And if we are going to look at a less famous example, so many uh, people of the grandmother uh, generation now remembers when they, when they were, lit were a little girl there were some man or woman in town who loved to tell the children ghost stories who could be seen creeping about the cemetery at night who just had seemed to have a darker outlook on life the bit of a sp spooky person and if they had lived today they would probably be called gods, at least quite a few of them. Basically, goth is so much more than just one thing. And even this music that spawned this lifestyle, it had its influences. For example, a lot of the music was inspired by the gothic literature from um, the Victorian age. It was inspired by various forms of poetry. It wasn't developed in a vacuum. Therefore I feel that if you are brought to goth by something else than this music, it doesn't mean that you are not goth. Now, for me, I like some goth music but I must admit that most of the goth music that I like are not of the old school type. It is more of the new hippie goth. Um, I like Nightwish, Theatre of Tragedy, that kind of thing. Uh, some of the old school bands I do like, but I don't know a lot about them. And this music was not what brought me to goth. I have always been goth, 
long before I knew that there were a word for it. Like, when I was a little girl, I could not get enough of ghost stories, science fiction, horror and fantasy stories. I was always this dreamer, and I saw the beauty in the darker side of things. I mean, I loved movies with an execution scene, not because I liked seeing people die, or the character, their characters, but because usually then you had some dramatic scene and you had a dashing hero having a last kiss with his lady love, and that really fascinated me. And I can remember that the first book that I read that stuck enough that I remember it, I couldn't have been more than three, perhaps? That was, um, I can't remember the name, but it, uh, the story was about a little ghost went out during the day, which turned him black, which of course then was a problem, because how would he be able to scare people during the night if he was completely black? So he had, he had this long quest to become white again, so he could spook people. And the other book I remember, which was some of the earliest that I mean, my mother read to me from I was a baby, but the things that I can remember were about a sea serpent and his family. And the first book series I read for myself were Angela Summer Budenberg's uh, A Little Vampire. And these things really fascinated me. When I, my favorite, um, uh, one of my favorite, um, a cartoon series when I was uh, seven years old were Dracula. I loved vampires, I loved bats, I loved all of that. And I remember that, I think I was three, three or four, when I first saw the My Little Pony movie. Uh, well, the movie that started the, uh, the 1980s cartoon series. And you might say, oh, what does uh, My Little Pony have to do with God? Well, you have to see the movie. It is about, well, ponies get kidnapped by a half goat, half man sorcerer who plans to turn them into dragons to pull his card of dark magic and he lives in this huge castle with lightning strikes all around and dragons and demons and goblins serving him. And I was so fascinated. I think I saw that movie a million times before we had to... Um, give it back to the video store. So these sort of imagery have always been with me. And as I grew up, I used to uh, start painting my nails black. I used marker pen to color my lips black. And I, and I remember my mother said that uh, my teacher had called her hysterical. Do you know that uh, Anya is wearing black um, Black nail polish and black um, um, uh, lipstick, that's what lipstick. And of course, she hadn't given me any of that, I used marker. So yeah, and I think I were eight or nine then. I loved these things. and But I didn't know the word ghast. I used to love taking a walk in the cemetery with my grandparents. And, but I didn't know the word God. I, I did all these things without knowing what God was. But when I, as a 15 year old teenager, managed to save up enough money for a, a computer and eventually got an internet connection, I suddenly found out about this lifestyle. And I was like, oh, here are people who are like me, who think like me, who have the same interests as me. And I labeled myself goth because it fits. So, and all of these things, all of the things that make me goth, that has been part of me forever. And at that time I had never heard a goth song. My uh, mother, <coughs> excuse me, uh, my mother is into classical music and that was what I listened to 
opera, classical music, and even to this day, my favorite melody is um, the Queen of the Night's second aria. So, am I suddenly not goth because all this imagery, all this, um, <coughs> all these feelings were not stirred in me by listening to music? Now, I think that what God is, is what lives inside of you. I think that God is the ability to see the beauty and darkness. To realize that for there to be, for there to be light, there has to be a shadow. And that darkness isn't scary, it isn't evil, it can be beautiful. And I also think that what God is, is dreams. It is dreams of something more than what we see in the world around us. It is dreams of the dramatic, the darkly romantic. It's um, I don't even know how to explain it. And I feel that the way I dress, the jewelry I like, these are expressions of these things I feel inside. And to me, <coughs> The, le the reason why I like some goth music is because I like these aesthetics. I like the gothic ex uh, aesthetics. And I'm, I don't like the aesthetics because I like the music. I like the music because I like the aesthetics. And now I don't think it's anything wrong with having music as the most important thing to define what is goth for you. But I think that the concept of goth and the lifestyle itself, it has to be shaped around the individual and their idea of what goth is. I saw a video yesterday where a very pretty young goth girl went on about uh, goth isn't everything. Yeah. You can't define it what, what God is for you. And to me, I agree to some extent. For example, um, no, Hannah Montana is not God in the general sense of it. However, if watching that, is it a TV series that shows you how much I know? But yeah, if. <coughs> If watching these movies and TV series is what gives you that feeling, that appreciation of the darker side of life, then it can be got for you. It's like I have some favorite Celine Dion songs that brings out those feelings in me. And while these songs are not goth in the general sense, they won't be labeled as goth, they are goth to me because they enhance that feeling inside that makes me goth in the first place. Therefore, yes, I feel that what an individual defines as goth has to be up to that individual. Now, goth as a category. No, that is pretty. That has a label, it has a box, and it is pretty defined. But what an individual defines as goth, that is something else. And the same with whatever or not fashion has to do with goth. It was also mentioned in that video, but anyway, yeah. Does it? Well, for me it has something to do with it. It's not the most important thing, but like I said, I like the aesthetics. 
So dressing gas is part of is part of the package for me. While I have a friend who is a goth who dresses in khakis and white t-shirts because he identifies goth but for him it's not about personal aesthetics. It's just about what you feel inside. And I also feel that to say that somebody is not goth because the aesthetics have a m bigger part of their uh, is a bigger part of it for them. I feel that that is wrong because I don't think we should just close goth down and say that you have to be this way to fit into that lifestyle. Because very much goth is about feeling, it's about personality, it's about individuality and then you can't sort of have a this is the joining requirements, and it's the same with music taste. Now, should I probably learn more about the goth bands that started the lifestyle? Yes, I should, because it has to do with general knowledge and history. It's the same that should you learn about the various generals and politicians that shaped your nation? Yeah, you should, because it has to do with the general knowledge that is very good to have, but does it mean that if you don't know who every single person that was part of shaping a nation is, that you're not a citizen? No, it doesn't. Does it mean that I'm not Norwegian because I'm not that interested in re in um, political history. So I have I have a basic grasp, but not a huge grasp of all the people involved in forming this nation. No, it doesn't. Should I learn more about them? Probably. It's it's good general knowledge to have, and I feel it's the same way. Should I learn more about these bands? Yeah, I should because. While I don't think they were solely responsible for creating this lifestyle, they were responsible for creating it in the form we know now. They were the catalyst. And as such, knowing this general history, it's good. But is it necessary to be goth? No. I feel that if the gothic lifestyle speaks to you, if Reading about the gothic lifestyle, you think, that's me. Then you're a goth. No matter how you dress, no matter how you, what music you listen to, or what brought you to it. If you identify with the gothic lifestyle and feel that you are goth, then you're goth. And I feel that people who are very interested in judging everybody else and determining it, you're goth, you're goth, you're not goth. I feel that that is snobbery, and I sort of feel that people that do that are insecure. They are, they want to have this exclusive club where you have to be this and that way to uh, gain entrance. And I think that whatever else goth is or isn't, an exclusive club. It is not. So yeah, I've been rambling a bit in this video, but to um, summon it up, I think that we as modern goths owe a uh, debt of gratitude to the punk scene and the original gothic bands that shaped the lifestyle in this form. I do not think that they were alone about it, because I think that you have to also credit the influences they had and the, lit the literary genres and everything else that's baked into it. And I feel that it's too much focus just on the music and not on the other things that helped shape 
to go. Lifestyle. I think that it is good for gods to learn about this because it's always good to know about the origin of the lifestyle. But I do not think that it is necessary to be considered gods to know every one of these bands and their influence and what color underwear the band members wore. I feel that you can be completely deaf, you can be completely uninterested in music, or you can have, a, or your music taste can be polka, and you can be goth. I also feel that the only person that has any right to determine whatever or not you are goth are you. I don't think this is a club that you have to be this and this and this way, a clique that you have to sort of fit into. I think that you have to define what goth is for yourself. And as a final little note. Uh, quite a few gods I have spoken to have said, but you can't expect us not to be prejudiced against others, even if we are often prejudiced against ourselves, because it's human nature to be prejudiced. I feel that is a cowardly way to look at it. Will you be able to end prejudice completely gone poof? No, you won't. There will always be prejudice, because yes, it's true, it's part of human nature. However, I feel that if you have actually felt on your body and on your mind how hurtful being prejudiced against is, then you should do your damnedest best not to do it to others. Now, I am not Christian, but I do have a very good point in the concept of do unto others as you would have them do unto you. So if you don't want people to treat you like shit because you're different, don't treat others like shit because they don't fit your prescribed idea of what God should be. If someone's idea of God is walking around in a pink tutu, a dust jacket and a huge purple glowing cross painted on their bellies. You don't have to associate with these people. But don't go out of your way either to say, oh you're not goth, you're not goth, you're not goth. Don't dare to use our protected title, you're not goth, you're not goth, you're not goth. Leave them alone and be goth your way. So yes, that is what I wanted to say. Have a great day and blessed be.